welcome again to the Skill Work Forum. I'm Tim, and I'm joined with my partner here, Brett. As always, we gather and talk about industry issues, what are the emerging trends, things out there that really impact the skilled trades, and, and more specifically, how it impacts your business in, in terms of pursuing skilled trades and filling the, the gap that all of us are aware of out there. So um, I guess it, we ought to it, it stop and say, hey, this is episode number 40. Number 40. So, yeah, that's kind of a, I guess that's a milestone, so. Yeah, I think that's, uh, are you are you 40 or are you older than that? I just turned 40. <laughs> I just turned 40, so it's kind of ironic. You got to you gotta quit dyeing your beard white. Well, I know, I, you know, the Bible says something about gray hair brings about wisdom and gray hair, and so that's what I'm, I'm trying to cover up for my lack of wisdom by having that. So, yeah, episode number 40, so that's, that's pretty wild, but um Today, we're going to talk about something. Maybe you've heard about it. You probably have. If you haven't, we'll introduce it to you. This, this uh, I guess, phenomenon that's been called the Great Resignation, sometimes called the Big Quit. You, you, I've heard it called both. So the Great Resignation. So what is it? And, and it really is something that's happened over the last probably year, maybe less. Maybe it's, it's actually we're on the front end of it now. But essentially, it's unprecedented and, and we're talking about, since they've been tracking this, it's an unprecedented number of employees voluntarily quitting or leaving their job. It's like this mass movement of workers, an exodus of workers. Now, that doesn't mean all of them are leaving the workforce, but they're leaving your workforce and they're going somewhere else. So there's this uh, amazing movement that's going on. And we'll, we'll get later into what are the causes of that, but... A lot of it has to do with just the number of openings, the sheer number of job openings coming out of the post-pandemic. And there's a low unemployment rate, and there's also some real sociological impacts of people that have worked through the pandemic that have left them, in a lot of cases, a little disillusioned, a little burnout, a little frustrated. So all these things are combining and uh, to have this amazing movement of workers that are going on out there. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. The, you know, the numbers are, you know, just to kind of look at the numbers and because and, they're they're alarming, really. If you're a if you're a business leader, um, you know, you're you really it would be pretty hard to not be impacted. Um, I mean, you've got to have a super culture um, and and just the just because of the sheer numbers of of, of individuals that are going. So right. just from. March to July of, of 2021, um, it's estimated that 19 million people quit their jobs. Oof. And from September and October alone, another 8.7 million. So that's escalated. Escalated. On top of that 19 million, and so kind of showing the, the rapid pace of, of this, and then on on top of that, you know, now you have, you know, estimated 11 million open jobs. Um, and, you know, obviously you can kind of tie the numbers back here. They estimate right now you've got about six and a half of those 11 million open jobs, which is across, obviously, all spaces. So everything from service industry to, to professional services to skilled trades, which is a space that, that, that we spend our time in. So obviously not none of that in, in a single space, but across the whole spectrum. And they project right, or they estimate right now there's about six and a half million people that are out of the workforce. So clearly something's got to give. Um, either, you know, we've got to get, we've got to get more people back uh, into the workforce. Um, um, you've got to, you know, to some degree, you know, which is kind of, kind of more closer to what we do. But companies, you know, I've always said, when the pain gets high enough, you know, uh, Companies will have no choice but to automate. Yeah, you'll force it forces change. You know, yeah. yeah. Necessity is a mother of invention, so it's the same sort of principle. So you know, we we did recently a couple of podcasts ago. I encourage you to go out and look at it. Our 2022 trends, things that we see coming. We kind of alluded to this, but there's some other factors um, that are you know inflationary pressures, supply chain pressures that are putting a lot more. Um, that are forcing workers to look for other jobs because they have higher expenses, higher needs, and the demand is there. So there's a lot of things that are that are involved in this. We'll unpack more of the reasons later, but some more 
statistics just to kind of bring this to a head in terms of you know how prevalent it really is. So there was another survey done by Bankrate that said 55%, so over half of all Americans who are currently employed or are considering looking for another job, over, over half, are going to look for another new job within the next 12 months. So either they're currently looking or they're unemployed, but they've, they've already, in their mind, said, I'll probably be looking for another job in the next 12 months. So people are moving. Stability is, is getting, it's becoming less stable in the workforce. So there's a change. There's a paradigm shift that's happening. Um, particular of that, those group of over half of the workers, nearly three quarters, a little over three quarters of Gen Zers and 63% of millennials plan to job hunt. So what is that? It's just um, younger than the baby boomers. So the younger generation think, you know, mid thirties and below are, are over three quarters of those are going to be looking for a new job. And then even a higher number of people that learn lo- that earn lower wages. So this is not as big of a deal in our in our area, but thirty thousand dollars was the number they looked at. So people who make thirty thousand dollars or less, many more of them are going to be looking. So this is why the service industry. You go to a restaurant right now, you can't find a seat. Hotels, people like that. Service industries are really being impacted by this in a big way. Yeah, no, it's it's you know you know we're throwing a lot of. A lot of stats out there, I, I think, really just to kind of, you know, kind of set the, it's just the reality of, of the impact that this is, is having. I mean, we have, we have clients of ours, you know, in, in the skilled trade space. I mean, they're not, I mean, they're getting hit by this left and right as well, um, because based on the, on the, either the culture or the opportunity or whatever the case may be, there's just so much opportunity. I mean, we have clients that, that have high level automation technicians paying very good wages and they're, you know, they'll call me up and say, hey, we had another guy put in his resignation last night and, yeah. and type of thing, you know, can you, you know, we need help. And so it's, it's hitting everybody. And, and, and there's, I don't think there's too many places, you know, um, that are that, that can't say that they're getting getting picked off a little bit or or poached as we say, the, you know there was a, a Microsoft survey as well. You know Tim kind of feeding off of everything we're saying here um, that still you know somewhere in that forty to fifty percent number is a consistent number of people that are that are consistently uh, right now they're saying they're looking for another job and. I read something as well that said that what's really a little bit unique in this this great resignation, the big quit, is that um, a lot of them are leaving jobs without even having a job. So there there there's such a confidence that they can find a job that they're not even. You know, my dad always said it's easier to find a job when you got a job, um, and so you know they're kind of breaking that rule and going, I can find a job, I'm out of here. And so, yeah, there there are those, and there there are others that I mean looking at some of the sociological and physiological, you know, just the mental and emotional impact of people that have worked extraordinarily hard and been pressed to the edge through the pandemic that are leaving just because they're done. They're just, they're just, mm-hmm. they're just checking out. I mean, we, we had a restaurant locally here that the entire staff just, they just walked out. Yeah. Middle of the day. <laughs> they, <laughs> doors wide open, registered, they just walked out and said, we're done. This ain't worth it. And I mean, and they're paying them substantially more than you and I might think that somebody at a, at a fast food restaurant yeah. would pay. So it, it, it is definitely happening. And, you know, the other thing about this is that a lot of these people not only are looking for a different job, but are looking for a different type of job. Mm-hmm. So they want to, they, they're, they're, it's almost like a midlife crisis. They're looking for, they want to do something different. So there's a lot of movement going out there. And while that's overwhelming, just to think about that. And we could have done a whole podcast on what do you do to attract or retain. And we have others like this. Encourage you to look back at some of those. We, we focus on that specifically. But, you know, this is a reality. So let's deal with it. And that is what is the real cost of this turnover to you? What's the cost? What are the implications of cost to you to bring this home? Because, uh, you know, bottom line is so what? And the so what is it's got a real cost associated with it. Uh, turnover cost. Not a new concept. We all deal with that. We, we typically know what our turnover costs are, but with the volume that we're dealing with here and the frequency, it's really growing. 
and it's being elevated and very hard to avoid uh, some of these costs, considering that one in three employees are going to leave your job over the next couple of years. One in three. That's just that's hard to get your head around. Yeah, it's a lot to manage. And, and so, and like you said, Tim, you know, you can go back. We've done some podcasts before on how do you how do you try to maybe reduce that number in your organization? And I think there are ways to improve engagement and to do different things um, in that. But the reality is it's probably still going to hit you at, at some level. We Before we totally jump into to the, the cost of, of turnover, which is an interesting thing, we if we go way back um, to probably some of the early podcasts, before you had COVID and before you had the big resignation and things, you know, you know, part of our part of our original model at Skillwork was was built around the reality of losing talent, losing losing experience, and what's the cost of turnover? You know, and now it's gone for kind of not not full circle, but it's 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 become accelerated or or exaggerated, whatever the right term is, with with. With yeah. this, it was always an issue, but it was always like, yeah, that's that's one of my concerns. Yep. Now it's like moved up the list. Yep. And it better be moving up the list because the bottom line cost impact everybody's, you know, ability to stay in business. Yeah, exactly. So, so before we jump into the the cost, let's just spend a minute on uh, a little further unpacking the why. So why why are people leaving? So there was uh, a couple studies that that were done. Um, and I apologize, I didn't write down where the number, where the study came from. Maybe we'll plug it in there. At some Rest point. assured, you didn't just make this up. No, I didn't. No, no, <laughs> guaranteed. I'm not that smart. So um, the uh, so, um, but they said 40 percent um, said they were leaving uh, due to uh, due to burnout and just they're just burnt out and and so whether that's the demand being put on them, whether that's the stress of everything else that's going on, but 40 percent and then. Another 50. I, I just want to yeah, add yeah. something on that, Brett, that if you think about, hey, you know, yeah, my workers are burnt out and everybody deals with burnout. But I mean, if you think about the impact of through the pandemic, mm-hmm. so people are dealing with everything on the job they always have and the stress of working long hours. But now you're working, you're worried about what are, should I get my kids the vaccination or not? Uh, they're out of school. They're not going to be able to go back to school. My school is not open. You know, what about my kids education? Uh, you know, a close relative has has COVID and they're in the hospital. There's just a ton of extra pressures that have been put on people that that are kind of accelerating that. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. You've got a, you've got a. You, it's a. Uh, I guess it's an understatement to to say. You know, you've got a unique unique set of circumstances that we've dealt with for the last two years. So it's, when we say burnout, right? It's just not. It's not just. Hey, I'm working too much. Well, that that is, and we'll talk a little bit about that. You know, about traditional burnout over time, that kind of thing. But with this, there's so much other stuff. Like you said, if you've got, you know, kids who are, are learning remote, and now how do I manage that and go to work and right. and all those kinds of things. So another uh, one that hit high, you know, and and you find it interesting, or I find it a little bit interesting that that while compensation is always a factor. It actually, in most of these studies, they're showing that it's not in the top two, that people aren't leaving specifically because I can make more money. Now that is out there and it's always a part of it. Compensation is always gonna be in the conversation, um, but they're really saying, you know, it's just people are leaving in some cases for the same money or less money just based off of of some of these other issues. So culture and respect uh, was 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 rated in the top two and fifty nine percent of the people that they surveyed mm. as to why they were were leaving. So not connecting, you know, you know, you know, people working remote has been a big, you know, you you you've lost you've lost that engagement level unless as a company you've really tried to figure out a way to work through that. But that's a reality that we're seeing in 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 a lot of uh, remote working that you know that 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 loss of of engagement and you know do they really care about me you know that kind of a thing um, I've read that a lot too that's like you know the the lack of concern for these other things we talk about you're yeah. just hey 
we're a company, we got to meet our production quota, we need you in here without really, you know, empathy mm-hmm. uh, for what they're going through. And, you know, you, you can poo-poo that. And, you know, some old school guys say, well, you got a job, show up. But the rea- I mean, this is just reality. And we need to deal with reality. And there is that that's impacting a lot of your people that are out you know, generating the revenue for your company right yeah. now. Well, we talked about it, Tim, and and when we did the trends, you know, uh, podcast, you know, a while back, and and one of those was uh, as an employer, you really have to. And I know, hey, I I you know, I can be a little bit old school sometimes and go, well, you know, work ethic and these kinds of things, and these things are really really important. And if you're a skill worker and you're listening. Work ethic, and so, um, but you know, it does. It means a lot, and it almost right now in today's world, it's almost, uh, it almost means as much as your skills some days. You know, and, and from a standpoint that you know, or, or at least if you really want to accelerate yourself, you you need both. <laughs> so, so one without the other thing. Yeah, but we talked about flexibility, Tim. We talked about you know companies. Even in the in the maintenance space, which is the space I came out of for years, and my dad and and, and your dad, and the idea of, of the thought that you were going to accommodate, you know, these these guys or these gals, you know, really wasn't much of a thought, you mm-hmm. know, and and that's where that respect piece, which is a lot of their issue. So, you know, split shifts, flexible hours, swappable shifts. Things that, you know, you would have kind of rolled your eyes at, you know, um, as a maintenance manager, for example. You know, now you've got to say, you know, is it really is it really that bad? I mean, if, I mean, is it is that a bad thing to think about? I got to think outside one. I got to figure out how I'm going to find the talent. But if I need to retain it, I need to be, you know, I need to be a little bit. Flexible. That doesn't mean, you know, flexible to the point where like guys work whenever they want and leave whenever not, not that type of flexibility, but some flexibility. We all know, I mean, because we deal with it, Tim. I mean, the vast companies that come to us and need us to help them with their skilled trade, normally their need is what? Second and third shift, and which we can help them with because our guys are travelers anyhow. But, you know, that tells you in itself that's a harder shift to fill. But if a guy knows, hey, I can, you know, I need to be, I can't work that night, but I can swap with a guy. You know that that type of thing. Those just simple things, right. I think, make a difference. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we got to get past the mindset of you know, it, it's it's no longer the idea that I'm not going to coddle these people. To it's empathy, and really, it goes back to you know, biblical principle. You treat people the way you want to be treated, and when we're going through difficult times or challenges at, at you know, outside of work, for example. It really is helpful to know that somebody actually cares about that that you work for and is willing to enable a little bit of flexibility in that season. So it's just a different mindset you got to think about. Now, you have a a choice. You could ignore that uh, and continue doing things as you have and, you know, be willing to accept the risk and consequence of this great exodus that's going on because it is real. It's legitimate. So let's get into the cost a little bit. We talked about that. So there was a, a study done just recently here in 2020 uh, by built-in beta, and it broke the cost of turnover into two categories. We're going to hit on those. I'll talk about the first one. It's the cost to actually hire those replacement employees. What does it cost you to go out and find them? And then Brett's going to talk about what's the cost to you when you don't have a filled placement, when you have a vacancy? What is the real cost of that? So these are two very real costs that you can track. So we have a couple of stats on this. So this study looking particularly at technical positions, which is kind of our area, skilled trades, you know, the higher technical positions. They, they, uh, this study found that the cost of hiring, going out and finding a new employee and everything built into that um, is 100 to 150 percent of the salary. <laughs> so if you got a $50,000 a year job, it's going to cost you anywhere from fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars to, once you're all said and done, to go fill that job. Now that's a big number to get your head around, uh, but this looked across a lot of industries. Maybe it's not specifically that number, but suffice to say that it's going to be a significant cost to you once you lose that employee. The cost to go out and find another one. There's recruiting costs. There's advertising costs. There's vetting costs. There's testing. There's onboarding. All those things are baked in. So you're forced to dedicate time and resources to all this recruiting 
everything I just talked about, onboarding and then the training to get them up to a level, not to even talk about the experience that walked out the door. That takes years to recover that in some cases. So you take a hit while that role remains unfilled and even while it's while they're getting up to speed. So these costs are really only considered about a third of the overall cost. So let's just work with that. Let's say it's going to cost you $50,000 to fill a job. We'll go on the line, the low end of that. It's going to cost you 50000 So that's only a third of what the actual costs are when you when you bake in some of the other things you're going to talk about, Brett. Yeah, th- this study, uh, which I actually thought was, was really well done, again, by this um, built-in beta, um, uh, and it really broke it down, as Tim said, to there's the replacement costs and the cost to hire and the recruiters and all that kind of thing. But the, the two-thirds of the cost they, they figured was, was the cost of the vacancy. So, you know, what's it costing you not to fill that role, which is really interesting in the, in the space that we live in, in the skilled trades. I would say that, that you know, our company... Uh, you know, we, we, we added a lot of clients in 2021, and I would say the biggest reason is, is companies have started to understand this exact issue. What's it costing me to not be fully staffed or at least somewhat fully staffed in my skilled trade space, you mm-hmm. know, in my maintenance mechanics? You know, what what's it really costing me? So uh, the obvious ones are, are the... The law, you know, when you lose that person and then during this time you've lost the productivity and you've lost the knowledge. We talk a lot about, you know, the baby boomer exodus um, and and um, the, n- not just losing that individual, but losing all of that skill that's going with them, all that experience. And so um, trying to put a, a number on that is very difficult for companies, but it's it's very much a reality yeah. of, of this on the on the baby boomer piece, and so um, you know one of the the kind of the uh, I don't know if I'd call them intangibles, you know, but but when they look and they say the the real impact of the of these vacancies, um, it it ties back to what we call uh, you know you know. Tim, we call it here, we call it the crazy cycle or the vicious cycle when we talk to companies. And that is tied into this burnout. So, so if you think about it, you're, uh, you're, you're, you've got people leaving, creating a vacancy. That creates a shortage in your staff yep. um, of knowledge and individuals just to fill the roles. Um, that leads to a lot of overtime, really stretching people thin, that creates the burnout. And then with that, people start to become in, unengaged. And what happens, you know, back to, uh, you know, the idea that people are leaving, they're gone. You're now on the crazy side. Yeah, you're actually producing, you're increasing your rate of turnover because, and, and the other thing we found too is, let's say, you know, Joe left. He took another job, another opportunity because he was in the crazy cycle at your organization. He couldn't take it anymore. He left. Well, he's calling his friends back there going like, yeah, I went down to, mm-hmm. you know, to Space Lease Brockets. Right. <laughs> and uh, they're paying me, you know, X amount more and they really respect me here. It's a great environment. And, you know, those people that are left carrying the weight. Now, that sounds pretty good. And I get, and we talked earlier about it. Uh, there's a recruiting model out there called the Headhunter. And they are actively looking for people and, you know, they're taking advantage of that discord. Yep. And they're actively pursuing your guys. So the more that you keep that vacancy and allow it to stay there, you're, you're, okay. you're there's a real cost associated with that. You no, know, there's there's an impact. And, and part of this two thirds cost, you know, number that they're talking about, a lot of that impact is is to your remaining staff. They talk about how the impact on their morale um, because of the workload, the burnout. But the other thing, and, and for a couple years now, we, we've had these conversations with our clients. And to be honest with you, they've had them with us, you know, because our clients are pretty smart. You know, I mean, I'm not saying they're smart because they're talking to us, um, but I, it's not a bad idea. And so, so but the... Clearly, the, they're looking at alternatives. <laughs> exactly, so, yeah. yes. They're, they're, they are already ahead of some of their competition in that they're not just sitting back and going... Hey, these guys got to suck it up. 
you know, kind yeah, of Yeah, why, why don't we put a new vending machine in the break room? That'll right. solve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of the, you know, the the ultimate, you know, you know, you know, everybody, you know, puts in the ping pong table. And so that solves all employee or, or issues. 50, 50 cents more an hour. <laughs> so, yeah. so, but... But one of the big ones is is you really as a as a as a company leader, whether you're a, a, a business owner, whether you're a maintenance manager, whether you're a, a general manager, whatever you are, you know, you really need to think about the impact to your existing or your remaining employees when they see you not addressing the issue. That that sends whether you want it or not, it sends a very loud message. You know, it's it's easy for companies to say our most important asset is what our people. You know, now hopefully you mean that when you say that. But but if you are if you are twenty percent short on your maintenance staff, um, which is the space we're talking about for us, is. For those other 80% that are taking on the load and doing the work and doing all the things, and they don't see you doing anything other than asking them to do more, um, which for a season they will do. You know, uh, for a season, these 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 guys and gals are built to to you know charge the hill. And right. They will do it, but they got to know that hey, helps on the way. Helps on the way. Yep. They got to know that, and and it, you, that's a key thing. And so people are listening all the time. You're communicating all the time. This is a key deal. And as Brett alluded to, a lot of our clients that we're dealing with now, they're recognizing that. And you know, so the idea when it gets down to brass tacks and you're looking at the cost, you can put this in real dollars. And so when you look at, for example, what we offer or companies like us is augmenting your staff and helping alleviate that, solve some of that. If you look at that, you know, on the at the very surface level. It, it and you know without any sort of you know depth of analysis, it looks like well that that's that's higher cost, that's higher labor cost than I'm paying right now. But there's a lot more that goes into that, and anybody that that gives it a little bit of time and a little bit of effort and puts a little bit of analytical rigor into it, you can see that actually it is a prudent measure from any perspective: uh, care of your people, morale, ability to meet your clients' needs. And cost, from every perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Well, I think Tim, you're right. I think the the there's two there's two factors I think you have to look at when you're when you're understaffed is is that the easy math, you know, which is still very practical math, is I'm not as productive. We've got too much downtime, not enough runtime. We've had clients that tell us, well, you know, my downtime last year cost me five million bucks. Are you going to charge me that much? If you don't, we're good. <laughs> and so, so that's, you know, that's very practical. This is what it's costing me. I, I got to fix this type of thing. I think the bigger cost is the long-term cost is that's very real. And if that's what it takes and do it. But once you break your culture, once your people no longer trust trust you, yeah. that you that you you recognize their pain. You, you, we talked a little bit ago about being having some level of empathetic concern about we have to solve this staffing issue and we got to do whatever it takes outside of the box to get that done. We got to get talent, not just bodies. We got to get talent in here. Yeah. Then if if you don't do that and you lose your culture. It's very hard to build it back. Yeah. It's very hard. So you can have all the strategy in the world and planning. We're all doing planning for next year. And there's a very famous statement about culture. It's culture eats strategy for breakfast every day. And if you lose that and you lose the trust in the people you keep out there, they're no longer willing to, you know, go the extra mile for you because there's some quid pro quo that goes into a relationship between employees and employers. And it's something we definitely focus on here every day. You can't take it for granted. And, this cost is a real thing. The big quit, the great resignation, it's out there, it's happening. I encourage you just to Google it if you hadn't heard it before. I mean, it'll 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 expand your mind. I won't say it'll blow your mind, but it'll be like, wow. It definitely did us as we looked into this. So it's real, it's here. It's not likely to improve overall in the short term. And you know, we we, we hate to continue to, to bring messages of concern, but as as business leaders, 
big part of our job is risk management. And you know, you got you got to face this and you got to do something about it. And the prudent companies, too. You can mitigate the risk. You can adjust to the changing dynamics. You can seek alternative solutions. Uh, we can help. Uh, they, and we, we're not going to solve all your problems, but there are other avenues you can look for. But we can help you persevere through this storm. So we'd encourage you to reach out to us. You know, we talked to a lot of companies and we very quickly get to a point where we can come to an accommodation that gives them at least a, a step to take in the right direction to help mitigate some of this risk. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Brett, any final thoughts before we wrap up today? No, no, I, d I don't. Um, you know, other than like you said, I mean, really, you know, uh, great leaders, face a challenge head on. You know, Tim and I are not here to, you know, we're not really, to be honest with you, we're not trying to sell you. Um, we're, we're trying to be at the same time, you know, there's a there's a saying that says it's, you know, it's, it's unkind to be untrue um, or unclear, I should say. And so we're trying to be, we're, we're dealing with it, we're seeing it, we're in the middle of it. We talked to a lot of companies, we're sharing that back and, and saying that, you know, good, great leaders, you know, face these challenges head on you know, find the solution. There's a path, you know, there, there is a path to working through this. And I think the, 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 the good leaders, the great leaders and the great organizations will get ahead of it, um, you know, sooner than the others. That's right. <laughs> yep, they always do. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, again, reach out to us. You can go to our link, skillwork.com. There's a way and method for you to reach out to us there. We'd love to engage you uh, on this or any other issues relating to the skilled trades. A domain. And so until next time, God bless.